Hello, distant teachers. So in this tutorial, I'm going to do basically this crazy amalgamation of three different things going on at once. So it might be a little bit confusing, but I just wanted to kind of throw it out there of what you could do. So the first little tab that I have open, as you can see, is Nearpod. I like to do some of these interactive lectures with my students. It allows them to put up virtual post-it notes. You can put in multiple choice questions. You can take polls. You can also make these student or self-paced, meaning that if you wanted for the student to complete this as an assignment where you've already embedded everything in it and they can go at their own pace, you could do that. Or you could do what I'm going to attempt to next week, which is go live with it. So the first thing you'd have to do is, you know, import your lectures and everything, which will be another tutorial. But for example, if I wanted to use the proteins one and I wanted a live lesson, I'd click on it. This will actually give my students a join code. They would then put that into their Nearpod account, which is free for them. So once they have that, then we could get started. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the fact that I would actually want to do this while I had a Google Meetup or a Zoom open. So in order to do that, I'm going to move my face a little bit first. So I'm going to go to my main selection menu. If I wanted to do a Google Meet, I would click on Google Meet, start a meeting. So Nearpod lecture, give it a name, and then it's going to actually start that meet. So camera's failed, obviously, at number one, because I'm already using it. But number two, I was about to turn that off to begin with. So if the camera had been on, I would have turned it off. That way, you're not visual to your kids. After that, and click the join now. My students could obviously do the join as well. This is the code right here that I could then give to my students. That way, they would have the code for my joining group. Once they joined, then they could actually mute themselves, which is what I would ask for them to do at the current point in time. And I could then have them, now that they're on their Nearpod, open up their Nearpod, and then we could begin the lecture. So when you're using this specific app, the Nearpod app, basically, again, it's this interactive kind of lecture that you could do. So while students are on the group chat with me, which is open in this tab, they're also going to have their Nearpod tab open. So just like I did, I kind of signed up for it. Then I basically went to my Nearpod tab. I would have students do the exact same thing. So I tell them, open the group chat, silence yourself, and then open your Nearpod lecture. Then I could have all of my little nerdlings together while they're participating in lecture. And this is actually what they would see. So this lecture will then pop up on their actual computers or their cell phones, which can also be used using the Meet as long as they have the Google Meet app. So we can go through and just to kind of show you, this would be one of the embedded activities that I do, list as many functions as you can think of that proteins perform. And with this, students could actually then type in together. And whenever it gets posted, it actually gets posted as a virtual post-it note. And one thing that I love is that if you have wonderful babies, but sometimes they don't have the best of filters, you can actually approve the student comments before they're posted. Usually with my freshmen, I will approve the comments first. If I'm working with some of my AP biology students, I don't really approve those comments first because we've already kind of set guidelines. Um, they're a little bit older and they kind of know what's appropriate and what's not. So this is one of my master plans. And again, using Nearpod while I am up at a Google Meet and I would actually record this, yes, on Screencast-O-Matic while I was doing all of it. That way students who weren't able to participate can actually watch the video. The only thing the students wouldn't be able to do if they were watching the video or the recording of this would be to participate in the group portion of it, which is the interactive lecture. So they wouldn't be able to post their virtual post-it notes or take those individual multiple choice questions or polls or anything like that. However, like I said, once you make one of these in Nearpod, you can actually set it to student paste as well. 
So the student who missed your online lecture because they slept in a little bit too long could actually then go and go through the motions and post to it. For me, I kind of like having all of my little nerdlings together so we can kind of, you know, talk a little bit about it. While we're here, I would also go back and kind of look at, you know, do any of them have any questions? And at the end of each section, or maybe after you do two or three slides, you can say, okay, now everybody go back to the meetup tab and we could kind of discuss, talk about any questions they might have. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. That's one of my evil master plans for the next, hopefully only a week or two. Um, but if not, then uh, I guess I will see you when I see you. Adios.